when I'm not working at my Etsy store making very modern art out of recycled guitar strings, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. How does your guitar stay so quiet? When I strum like you, I wouldn't be able to hear my own voice, and don't tell me it's palm muting, please. So drowning out either yourself when you're singing uh, solo or playing with somebody as an accompanist is something that's a real problem, okay? That's why, really, as soon as you can get away from kind of the open <laughs> chords, the better. So a couple tips that I can give you because, again, every vocalist is different. Again, whether it's just yourself or whether you're playing with another vocalist like I like to uh, perform with, a lot of these acoustic duo things that I do, some of them will have like really quiet voices that you kind of have to, you know, sculpt your sound around other times. You'll play with a, a powerhouse that's really belting it, and then you gotta be able to increase your dynamic. So dynamic playing is super, super important. A lot of it, like you said, not to say, is palm muting, okay? So let's just take, for example, something like a, like a B flat major C D minor progression, which is that Redbone song that I do a lot with Ali Live. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to play it. First of all, you can palm mute it like, Okay, so that's really those same chords, palm muted, but the dynamic is more than just kind of deadening a sound. A lot of it is selectively hitting the right strings that you're aiming for. So if I'm playing like this B major or B flat major seven, it's not all six strings. I might just kind of hit a root note on the downstroke and then kind of get the higher part of the strings into it. So it's really kind of becoming a master of just aiming for certain strings. And again, it's not like I'm always like, I'm just going to hit just the D and the G string and do it every time. It's more just kind of like you're aiming for the center of it instead of getting the whole thing. And then you can kind of have the option of increasing that for like a more dynamic part of the song. So it's a combination of palm muting, aiming generally for pieces of, you know, just kind of bands. Like I think of a good way to practice that is if you just take any, even if you want to take an open chord or a bar chord or something like that, uh, try to chunk the string set into groups of two. So the E and the A string, the D and the G string, and the B and the E string. Be able to do it unmuted and then palm muted. And then really, you just kind of build the muscle memory into your wrist. Like if you notice when, when I'm playing, I'm generally not doing a lot of that. It's more kind of like a tighter sound where the rotation or, you know, the, the movement of my wrist stops through the string set. And uh, the more you do that, the more you're gonna be able to kind of just focus on strings that you wanna hit. And then really you can kind of control your dynamic. Add it to a palm muting sound. And then another thing is just chord voicings. Being able to understand the fretboard and know where the chord voicings are is really gonna give you a lot of control over how loud you're playing. So again, dynamics to me isn't just how loud or how soft you're hitting it, it's the arrangement of the chords that you're using. Like if you're just playing a C major chord and that's drowning out a vocalist, maybe you wanna do a C major chord here, maybe you wanna do it here. That is true whether you're playing in a band, whether you're playing with just a singer or whether you're just singing yourself, the chords that you choose are gonna have an impact on the dynamics. So that's why just learning a bunch of different chord voicings, really understanding the fretboard is super important. It's something I try to preach all the time. So just try to work that stuff in your playing and then you will be able to find a way to play quiet enough to accompany yourself or a singer. Your A major seven sucks. Skipping that string by muting it forces a harmonic into the overall sound. You may not notice with your tone turned down all the way, but what about if you want high tone in your sound? Uh-oh, you have a harmonic in play now. It may or may not sound dissonant or otherwise unwanted. Just play the fifth. All right, Salty Blues Jerk, don't tell me how to play a major seven chord. If I want a dissonant harmonic in there, I'll take it. And actually, if you're a true boss, you would just skip the A string. When it comes by the next QA, what do you think about the new Arctic Monkeys album? Oh, you mean Alex Turner Poetry Hour? Actually, I think AM is an absolute masterpiece in awesome and minimal electric guitar playing that is just a really low-key a great guitar album. Uh, I can't really say the same about the new Arctic Monkeys album, but I'm still digging it. I think it's, it's just kind of like a cool, chill album for the most part. A couple highlights. Uh, again, it's, only, it's still pretty fresh. I've only heard it a few times through. 
I dig it. It's not what AM was. A little wordy. It doesn't have the same hooks that the last one had. But uh, I, still, I still think it's pretty solid. And your A major 6, I put the quotations, since there is no A major 6, it's just called A6, has an open string in it. That is not transferable to any location other than right there on A. You need to choose some better chord archetypes. Luckily, I have it all covered in my upcoming book called blah 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 blah. Another one of my favorite things about these salty comments, especially on the older videos, is they'll comment, and then like that one, they'll respond to their own comment to add to the initial comment. But a lot of times what happens is they'll comment, and then there'll instantly be like a thumbs up, like someone liked it, when obviously it was them just liking their own comment because it's like an older video, so they were probably the last person to watch it. So, uh, you know, that's just kind of like par for the Salty Blues, uh, Salty Blues scene, which by the way, get your Salty Blues merch. I'd love to know how close you are to ruining a take with a fit of laughter after running through the list of problems. Just want to add, I hope you keep up the growth of this channel to be a viewer while the girls really involves the subs as a part of the community. So a lot of people have been asking for outtakes, but honestly the outtakes, especially in the solo videos, really aren't that funny because it will be me screwing up a joke and then just like getting down on myself and then just getting it together, kind of slapping myself around a little bit and going back. Every now and then there is kind of like a moment. So prison beatings are going out of style. And how? <laughs> prison beatings? For the most part, it's just, it's just grinding. The better, I do think I will try to make an outtakes video with some of the stuff that like Ian comes over with, but uh, I'm gonna have to parse through some old footage. But again, I appreciate all the support from the merch store that's up, and uh, I'll keep it coming. Hi guys, question, if you do not have a jamming buddy, what is the second best thing? Backing track, playing along with songs. Question two, is GarageBand for recording songs any good for beginners? Before I waste my time learning how to work with it, have a nice weekend. Absolute best thing is get a looper pedal. I can't say it enough times. If you're on the fence about getting a looper pedal, just shut up. Quit being a punk and just get a looper pedal. Those digital pedals are like a hundred bucks. It'll be the best hundred dollars you ever, ever spent. You can even get them cheaper. Use a lot of the time. Looper pedal, looper pedal, looper pedal. Backing tracks are also really great, but guess what they're not good at? A looper pedal. Get yourself a looper pedal. So uh, after that, as far as like learning GarageBand, Absolutely, give it a shot. I know some great stuff has been made with GarageBand. I think Annie Clark of St. Vincent made her first album in GarageBand somehow, which I still don't understand. But really, it's more about the interface than the DAW, right? It's, it's more about what you put in there. As far as like just organizing sound, especially if you're doing maybe kind of like a, a smaller bass project, GarageBand is totally fine. It doesn't give you the capability of something like Logic, but if you're a beginner, it's fantastic just being able to kind of like see you know, the audio that you get in kind of manipulate it at a basic level. Again, it doesn't give you near as much power as Logic will as far as mixing and stuff, but it actually is a pretty incredible product as something that comes free with, uh, with Apple products. Same with like uh, Adobe Audition or something like that. I learned that uh, Masita, that one artist that I threw to Listening Homework way back in the day, did all his albums except for the last one in Adobe Audition and it blows my mind because the stuff is so good. So it's really just like, Learn any DAW, all those skills are transferable. You know, like if you like really master GarageBand, you step into Logic, it's not like you've wasted your time mas like mastering GarageBand because that's just like an intro into recorded music. So as soon as you can get in that stuff, the better, and uh, just rock it out. This is so inaccurate that it is almost funny. You can't fake piano skills. I can tell you on very good experience that you can absolutely fake piano skills. Guru, have any experience with the six string banjo, AKA, Genjo or Banatar, please be honest and negative because I'm becoming infatuated with the sound and my wallet and wife say so. Oh, you mean one of these? Yeah, these things are... are interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, I don't even remember how, I got this as a gift like a while ago. I believe it's called a Banjitar. It's an interesting sound, and I haven't really jammed with this in a while, but uh, I will say that if you layer this with an acoustic guitar, it actually does ca sound kind of cool, and you know, it kind of sounds... It sounds, it sounds fine. It sounds like a banjo for the most part. I might get some banjo hate from actual banjo players out there, but uh, it really is. It's just a six string banjo. Banjos usually have like four and a half strings, and they're tuned differently than a guitar. This is great because you can get that classic banjo sound 
without having to learn how to play banjo because it's strung just like an acoustic guitar with acoustic guitar string. So, uh, you know, that's pretty cool. One question I have had about banjos is how do those like real backwoods hillbillies have such nice sounding banjos? I feel like there's like a lot of hardware that goes into this that uh, it's kind of difficult to get your hands on. I don't know, somebody educate me on that, please. So for listening homework, we're gonna go straight up classical with the new Cody Cook album. So check this out, Cody's a buddy of mine. Uh, I think it sounds really good. And if you have any questions about this kind of music or anything in general, Cody's actually gonna be here next week so we might make some videos. So check this out because I think I personally do not listen to enough classical music. It always just puts me in like a, like a peaceful mood. So let me know what you think of this. Uh, check out the rest of that stuff and any questions or comments you have. Hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, the website, the blues letter. Get your merch and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.